you got to say it. You got some stuff going on? We can help you. We can work you through this thing. We're all going through something together. Let's just get our cards on the table. What are we dealing with? There's too many people struggling with too many things right now that people just are not offering them an avenue to talk about. Give them the opportunity people want to share. Welcome back to Mulligan Brothers. Today's video, as always, was sponsored by Huel. I'm drinking Huel Black Edition, which has 26 vitamins and minerals, 35 grams of protein and slow release carbs to make sure that I can stay satiated and proteined up whilst I make these documentaries. If you want to find out more about these, go to the link in the description. I'll talk about them a little bit later on in the video. When I lost Jacob, I, I did not feel anything. Like I could not feel any emotions. And I was searching online for this, like putting all different terms and trying to write my situation out and Google it. And nothing came up. No men had shared their experience with it. And luckily I found this group where this guy shared a, a similar experience to me. And just him sharing it allowed me to feel something again. I, you know, I could, I understood I wasn't different and that somebody else was going through it and I wasn't the only, the only guy. Um, so hundred percent, you know, share, sharing it. I think there's, there's something in, even if you don't think it's going to help yourself, it could help somebody else. And I think that's powerful as well, knowing that, you know what, I'll be selfless and share it to try and help somebody else. If it helps somebody else, great. In the process, you'll probably help yourself as well. Um, I think if, if you're okay to talk about it, the, the effect of the military, and I guess it goes for the fire department and the police department, quite a few other jobs as well, where you can't speak to your own mental health, because if you do that, you could lose the job that you absolutely love and you've worked so hard for. Could you talk through that? Is that something you, you're, yeah. In my experience, it's like that with every organization. They want to wave this mental health banner like, hey, we're here, reach out, suicide prevention hotlines. They don't mean that literally. Because if you do, they have to pull you offline. They have to seek treatment. You got to get outpatient, inpatient. They want to put you on meds. And now that because you're on these meds, you can't deploy. You can't parachute anymore. You can't scuba dive anymore. You can't do that job anymore. And that happens to one person. The other 5,000 people look at it and go, yo, no, we're good. We're all good here. But they're not. Same thing with the cops, same thing with the firemen. And that's why I tell these guys now, I'm not saying don't report it up, but I'm saying if you have not exhausted everything inside of this team to open up communication at 100%, who are you going to talk to? Like, the six guys that we deploy with, I know everything about you six guys. Like, I know what everybody looks like naked. I know what kind of shampoo you use and what deodorant you use. I know what you smell like after a a nine hour walk through Afghanistan. I know you by smell. I know, I know whose hamstring I grab in the middle of the night under night vision. I mean, I know everything about you, but you won't share any of that with me. Why? Because no one will ever just initiate. No one will ever just say it. Like, I think we push on them now. Like, just say it. If I can't be open and honest with you, then what the fuck are we doing here? Like, what's the whole purpose of going to the selection to be a part of this team if I can't just be open with you? And at the end of the day, it only makes the team better. You want to talk about nonverbal communication? Well, let's really communicate and let's really understand each other. And then we can shut the words off. And now I can just read you. It only translates to everything else even better. Like now I really know you. If I said worked with you for 10 years, but I couldn't tell you where you're from. I'd, I'd ask that to anybody. Ask them what their middle name is. Like, oh, do you really know them? No. It's his birthday. What's his dad's name? You ever met his dad? No. You ever heard about his dad? No. You don't really know them. You're only focused on one aspect of this whole chain. Like, you gotta look at the entire thing. How do I get him at his optimal state? By truly giving a shit. By giving him an opportunity, by giving him a voice at the table and letting him know like, but there's a safe space right here. You gotta say it. You got some stuff going on? We can help you, we can work you through this thing. We're all going through something together. Let's just get our cards on the table. What are we dealing with? I've been drinking 12 beers a night for the last 10 months. I'm like, damn. What's going on? Like, I don't know, nothing. No, don't start with me, nothing. How'd it start? Start to peel back the onion layer by layer and show them you actually give a shit, then actually start to check in with them and build some confidence in the team they can come to you. That's really what it is. A lot of these jobs, like they're not able to put you on that mental health, you know, <laughs> guided treatment because of what happens after that. They put you on meds, you can't do your job. People don't want to do that. So you just suffer in silence and they really go down the rabbit hole. 
Now they get removed, they get hurt, now they don't have anything. And then you just spiral so fast. Like, God, where'd that happen? It's been happening. We just didn't do anything. We never gave an opportunity or an avenue to try to get better. Somebody's got to give it a voice. Somebody's got to say it. That's that's why I kind of went on Sean Ryan. Like, I came back from Mexico and that was my mission. Like, I'll tell everybody. I struggle with mental health all the time. <laughs> I do that with these groups too. How many of you guys struggle with mental health? Nobody's hand goes up. Like, well, that's fine. Don't worry. I'm the only Navy SEAL that's ever struggled with depression. Yay. Put me on Google. I'll be on the Wikipedia page, the mental health guy. <laughs> that's me. Like, I know all you guys are. You don't have to bullshit me. That's fine. And we'll start to talk. I'll really start to get into it. And I'll start to watch these guys' eyes start watering up as they're processing what I'm saying. I'm like, I already know. You don't have to lie to me. Dude. You can come to me later. We can talk about it. I give them all my cell phone number. Call me. Shoot me an email. You ever need to talk, we'll get through it. And you'll see a lot of guys will come over like, dude, thank you so much for that. He's like, so-and-so is really struggling. Like, oh, you're not? Okay, cool. Did you get the calls? Oh, yeah. No, I do. Calls, emails, FaceTimes, we get it all. And it all comes from a good place. Because they don't have a person to go to. They don't have anybody that will answer the phone call and listen to them with no bias. Like, I don't have any skin in this game. You're not paying me for this. I'm doing it because I don't want you to shoot yourself. I don't want you to do something that makes suicide the new acceptable answer. Like, I've been there, dude. And a lot of the times, the people that talk about mental health don't ever talk about their experience with mental health. They just tell you what you should do. Well, talk to me about you getting through your depression. Well, I've never had depression. So you're talking nonsense. Cool. It's like taking, it's like taking lifting advice from somebody who's never been in a gym. Taking a dietitian who's 400 pounds. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. A lot of times they need someone to mimic. But nobody expects me to have mental health issues. I do. I get anxiety, I get depression, I get the whole thing. But everything I do, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, is constantly combating it. Why do I have anxiety being late? Why do I stick to a timeline to control my timeline so that then I'm not late? Like how many times people get stressed out and their whole day just gets compounded with shit because they're five minutes late leaving their driveway. Majority of people. They get stuck behind a school bus. Now they're late for their presentation. They walk in 20 minutes late. Their kid's sick. They got to run out. It's, it's all these little things. It's like if you set that positive routine, it builds in buffer to where you can control the variables. Well, now I'm not stressed out because I woke up on the right time. I got on the road at the exact same time. My car was already filled up with gas. My clothes were laid out the night before. Boom, 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 boom. I'm there with 15 minutes to spare. I'm going through my notes. Like, that's how you get past this. Successful wins over and over and over again. It doesn't have to be crazy complicated. It can be super easy. But as far as the mental health shit goes, that routine will save them. The 20 minute walk will save them. But at the end of the day, if you're not able to say it, it's going to be very, very hard for you. You're going to make, I'll steal this one from Vernon. You're going to make a hard conversation an impossible conversation. Just got to say it. A lot of it is just that initial just, you know what? As soon as he walks the door, I'm going to say it. Just initiate it. And I tell the dudes that, like, just say it. And they're like, I don't know how. Hey, Brian, I've been thinking about shooting myself. I'm like, what the f***? I know, dude. And I promise you, he's not going to run out of the room. He's not going to hang up the phone. He's not going to put it on social media. He's going to set the f*** down pop in his earphones and listen to every word that leaves your mouth for the next 45 minutes until he solves this issue. And I bet you he's going to throw one back at you. Do me too. He will. Like, There's too many people struggling with too many things right now that people just are not offering him an avenue to talk about. Give him the opportunity people want to share. Today's episode, as always, was powered by Huel. This stuff has been absolutely crucial to my training and the world record I just broke, the world's heaviest marathon where I carried 220 pounds for 28 miles. Yes, I achieved it, guys. It is done. This is what I was drinking, Huel Black Edition. It has 35 grams of protein, 26 vitamins and minerals and slow-release carbs, and it's what I use in my training all the time. But don't just take my word for it. People like the hardest geezer ran across Africa drinking this stuff. It's absolutely amazing. And if you want to get exclusive offers and deals, go to the link in the description and you can find out more about their other products like their daily greens and their meals, which I eat 
every single lunchtime. Thank you to Hugh for sponsoring the video. 